care and feeding of lithium batteries is this week's topic. Hi, this is Jim from RV4x40.com where we try to show you some of the tips and tricks of things we've learned about being full-time in an RV and show you some of the places we've been able to visit in our four years on the road. A week or so ago I did a video on batteries in general and gave you some information about that and if you haven't looked at that I'll put a link to a, that in the uh, section up above and you can go back and check that out. But this week I wanted to dive into lithium batteries in particular they are the coming technology. A lot of people are still using lead acid and that's great if that works for you. But lithium have a lot of advantages. We went through that in the other video, so I'm not going to repeat all those details there. But often I find people do not have a lithium profile in their battery charger system in their motorhome or their RV or whatever type of RV they may have. And that is the case in this 2014 Tiffin that we now have. It has a system made by Magnum. Magnum Dimensions, I think, is the right name for that. It's part of Sensato. It's a parent corporation. And we have a 2,000 watt sine wave inverter, which also doubles as a battery charger or converter, if you prefer that term. And then it has a control system on it. We've added to that a uh, battery monitor kit, a BMK as it's called. And we also have an automatic generator start uh, in there as well. So right now our coach has a generator. We don't have the solar installed yet. That's on the list of things to get done here shortly. So I'm going to talk primarily about using the Magnum system. And it does not have a profile for doing lithium, but it actually has a couple of different profiles internally that you can use. And we are using the latest generation, latest software of their ARC controller. It's an ME-ARC and that is their more sophisticated controller. What I'm going to show you is specifically about that. It is at revision 4 for that controller. So if you have a Magnum system with a different controller and a different inverter, your details may be slightly different and some of the older systems don't actually have an ability to do some of these things. But I can show you what we can do with a current generation controller. Another thing about Magnum which came up in my research on this was we did have an older controller in the coach and previously when I talked to Magnum they would allow you to return a controller uh, to them for a nominal fee I think it was 50 bucks uh, plus shipping both ways and they would update it to the latest generation of their firmware I talked to them about doing that before this video and in part due to the COVID-19 uh, reductions in force they've done in their factory and reduced workload and tried to make things more efficient and more streamlined for controlling COVID they are no longer offering that service so that may or may not be an option in the future. They wouldn't comment one way or the other on that. But I'm going to show you what I can do with this controller for our lithium batteries and give you some hints for how you might want to program it. The specifics will certainly only apply to Magnum, but you may find similar controls and similar operations in whatever system you have. So it, it might be a starting point for you, at least it'll show you how we can do it and what the parameters are you would need to be concerned about. So hang on, we're going to dive into a bunch of screenshots of the controller and walk you through how to program a Magnum system for lithium ion batteries. Before we go into depth on how to program a Magnum system for lithium batteries, specifically for Battleborn batteries, it's worthwhile to talk about some characteristics of lithium ion phosphate. Details can vary among different manufacturers, so check the specifications for your batteries to be sure. The first thing to know is that these batteries do not like to be stored at 100% charge. Since they have very low self-discharge characteristics, it makes sense to reduce the state of charge if they won't be used to provide energy for a period of time, say if you're parked at a location with AC power all the time. For long-term storage, the recommended charge levels are usually around 50 to 60 percent. So you would see that the parameters we set up would keep the batteries heavily charged. This would be fine if you were camped off grid somewhere and using the batteries to power your rig, but you need to plan your charge discharge cycles based on need. So long as the batteries are being cycled, keeping them at less than 100 percent is acceptable. Another factor to take into account is whether your batteries can be discharged fully to 100 percent or if your manufacturer might recommend not doing that to the batteries, but keep that in mind. The usage cycle for your batteries is essential information. 
This is why the BMK is so important, because it gives an accurate measure of the stated charge of the batteries, and that information is key to maintaining them. They are too expensive to not treat them right. We've had four years of full-time living in an RV, both in campgrounds with commercial power and in boondocking locations with no services at all. We know that our normal usage overnight is about 50% of our total capacity. This will allow us to run the refrigerator, watch some TV in the evening, get ready for bed, including things that run all night like fans and phone chargers. We do shut down and unplug things that have a parasitic drain, like computer systems and peripherals. And we have enough battery left in the morning to microwave breakfast and make coffee and room to spare. This video is only talking about AC power and using the Magnum charger. If you also have solar, and there are far too many different solar charger controllers for me to go into detail on how to set them up, you should consider how to program them in your system. The goal will be to use the bulk and absorption cycles from your solar system to replenish the energy in the batteries. After that, you would want to go to a volt voltage of around 13.6 volts so that the batteries are not providing the current you need for your normal daytime activity and you're not charging the batteries excessively. That would leave you with ample power to run your rig overnight until you get started with solar energy the next day. This is the default screen when you look at the Magnum ME ARC controller. It shows us that the charger is working. We're delivering some charge into the system. The critical component in managing battery systems is to know the state of charge. The BMK or battery monitor kit that Magnum offers has a number of different things that it can show you. If we rotate the select knob, we'll see that the BMK is ready. It tells us it's online and capturing data. The state of charge of the batteries is 100%. This is perhaps the most important parameter you get for the good BMK, is that it records the input current and output current from the battery system and it calculates over time what the state of charge of those batteries is. You have to tell it the size of the battery bank so it knows what to calculate against, but as you use the batteries and as you charge them up, it continuously keeps track of what that state of charge is, which is a very important parameter, whether they're lithium batteries or lead acid. Another feature of the BMK is that it has a precision voltmeter. This is much more accurate than the voltmeter in the charger itself, and it also measures the current. At this point, you can see we aren't actually delivering any current into the battery because its current is zero. The BMS system in the lithium batteries has cut off the charge current. We start off by pressing the setup button on the front panel down below the screen, and then we're going to use the select knob to scroll up to the charger setup because that's where we find the battery charging parameters. The first one we're going to look at is a constant current, constant voltage battery type. Terminology here is interesting. If you're familiar with lead acid battery chargers, they'll typically talk about a bulk mode charging and then an absorption mode charging. In fact, the bulk mode is a constant current mode and the absorb is a constant voltage mode. Why this is called differently when you're talking about this particular type, I'm not sure, but that's the way Magnum chose to uh, talk about it but you can remember CC is bulk and CV is absorb. The first parameter we're going to set is the charge current in the constant current mode. The charger that I've got in the inverter is capable of 100 amps DC and you have to also look at how much current can your batteries accept. Battleborn, which is the batteries we have, rates their batteries of being able to absorb up to 50 amps uh, in this constant current mode. And I have four of those, so I could go as high as 200 amps. But the battery charger itself is only capable of 100 amps, which is half of what they could take. So that's where we'll set this particular parameter. You'll have to check that with your batteries as to how much charge they can accept and make sure you don't exceed that number for the combination of all your batteries. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the bulk voltage, the constant voltage, which is the same as the absorption voltage. It's 14.4 volts. And the way the charge curve works is that the battery will sit there at 14.4 uh, volts once it gets that high and it will stay there until something causes the charge cycle to stop. In the CCCV mode, the CV portion of the cycle can be stopped based on the time it has been in the constant voltage mode. Battleborn recommends 20 to 30 minutes per battery to assure a full charge. We have four batteries, so this will be set to two hours if I wanted 100% state of charge. 
if I want to prevent reaching a full charge for the purpose of keeping the battery at something less, I can set this to as little as 0.1 hours. My experience says that if you stop the cycle this short, it will result in a state of charge somewhere in the low 90% range. We can also set the charge done based on the current into the battery bank. As we've seen, the BMS will cut off the charge cycle once the batteries are fully charged. So we could use a setting of zero amps to stop the charge cycle, knowing that the batteries were at 100%. If we want to prevent the batteries from reaching the full charge, this number could be set quite high, perhaps to the 100 amps that the charger is capable of. So we would jump out of the constant voltage cycle quickly. And lastly, there is a safety cutoff in case something goes wrong with the charge cycle and you need to stop it just based on total time. And I would set this at six hours. With a CCCV profile, once the charge cycle is completed, the battery charger goes into a silent mode. It is providing no output voltage at that point. Using the BMK, the controls will start a new cycle once the battery voltage falls to a recharge point. This can be set to keep the batteries charged above some minimum level. Battleborn recommends a setting of 13.3 volts for this, but I have found this to be a bit too high in terms of the depth of discharge before a new cycle starts, and I currently use 13.2 volts. There are other settings on the controller, but some of them have been preset by selecting the CCCV profile. They come into play when using the custom battery profile we'll talk about next. They include the absorb done point, while you could change the max charge current in setting 03E, it is recommended to leave it as set previously. Max charge is controlled by the CCCV settings, as are the final charge and the EQ reminder. The other battery type that Magnum provides for charging lithium is a custom battery. Here we see the more classic terms for a battery charger instead of the newer CCCV. We set the absorb volts to 14.4, we can set the float voltage to 13.6, but we may or may not use that. Equalization should be set to 14.4, and the equalization time to as short as possible, which is 0.1 hours. The absorb time can be set to 2 hours, based on Battleborn's recommendation of 20 to 30 minutes per battery for our four batteries to assure a full 100% charge. The BMS will shut off charging when the batteries are full, but you also have a choice of using charge amps or SOC state of charge to terminate the absorb stage. You can select a current where the absorb cycle will terminate and you'd use zero to make sure that the batteries are at 100% charge. If you want to truncate the charge cycle, then set this to some high number like the 100 amp max charge that we had set earlier. You also have a choice of using a SOC setting, but that is a bit misleading. Due to the very flat bulk charging profile and the speed with which lithium batteries can charge, you are likely to be above 90% during the bulk cycle, so that the lowest practical number is 90% or a little bit higher. This will result in essentially no time being spent in the absorb phase. It would be an excellent upgrade for Magnum to actually extend the functionality of the state of charge ability to terminate the entire charge cycle, that is during the bulk cycle, in some future software release. The final charge stage settings are among the more interesting ones. Multi is a default, but was designed around the needs of lead acid technology and has some pitfalls, so I don't recommend it for LiFePo batteries. Float is useful and worth considering if you want to maintain the charge that you have achieved while still on shore power. So if you're in a situation with outside AC coming into the RV, a good way to set the system up is with a quick truncation of the absorb cycle to keep the batteries below 100% state of charge and then use the float final stage. Your batteries will maintain the charge for an extended period but not indefinitely so you do have to watch for eventual discharge. You're not exercising the batteries so there is some risk that if you need them they might be depleted and you would not know it because the float state will prevent the voltage sense points from triggering a new charge cycle. The last choice is called silent and it means the charger quits charging at all. The DC system will be powered from the batteries. If you still have power coming into the RV, the big drain of the AC appliances, like the microwave, will not be using battery power. But you will have the drain of lights and anything else operated from the 12 volt DC so the batteries will be cycled. To keep the batteries charged, there is a rebulk voltage setting. Battleboard recommends 13.3 volts, but this probably needs some experimentation to determine the best setting for you. 
Lithium batteries have a very flat discharge curve, and a tenth of a volt can be a significant difference in charge level. Ideally, the software would have provided another SOC point for accuracy, but it is not available. Perhaps a future software revision will change this. If you have another source, such as a solar system, that might be useful to help maintain the batteries. But unless you are off-grid where putting in a full charge gets bled off as you use the batteries, it pays to make sure your combined charging sources don't maintain the batteries at 100% SOC all the time. There are a couple more settings to deal with. The next one is the EQ reminder, which can be left off since you don't need to equalize lithium batteries. We do want to set the maximum charge rate to something that the batteries can safely accept, and 100% is fine for our system, and it's just half the rated maximum allowed charge rate for the Battleborne batteries. There is a maximum time of six hours for safety in case something goes wrong, and you need to truncate the charging process. And that is the end of the options. One word about the magnum display. The screen shows the charger delivering 14.4 volts and 11 amps. At the same time, the BMK display would show 14.4 volts but zero current. The difference is there is an 11 amp draw in the 12 volt system, but none of that is going into the batteries of all the various loads that exist. I hope you learned some things this week about how to care for your lithium ion batteries and specific lithium iron phosphate that we're talking about and that this will be useful for you in the future. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, click on the subscribe button down below. We would appreciate it if you would do that. In the meantime, as we travel the highways and byways and out of the way places in America, we hope to see you on the road somewhere. If not, come back next week for another video and you have a great day. Hi, I'm Jim from RV4x40.com, where we try to show you some tips and tricks about leaving. Yuck. Hi, I'm Jim from RV4x40.com, where we try to show. <laughs>